Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and this is Learn How to Edit Stuff merch. If you're just dying to support this channel while simultaneously getting yourself some post-production related merch, today's the day. Today, available to you right now is the Rubber Duck t-shirt, the Render t-shirt, and the very funny Lower Third t-shirt. If you got friends that are editors, they'll understand the joke, but nobody else will. Designs are available in various colors and formats, including hoodies and coffee mugs. So if you've ever wanted to support this channel and support your favorite YouTube editing guy, now's your opportunity. In the video description below is my merch available to you now. Very exciting. But what's also exciting is today's lesson. Eight things that I think you should know about Adobe Premiere. Now, some of these things we've covered in past videos, they've been buried deep in the middle of a lesson and I'll do one quick thing and people are like, how did you, ah, but we're gonna put it all into one video today. These are very helpful tips and tricks that will speed up your workflow and generally make you a happier person as you continue the editing process. The weird hand thing I just did. All right, I'm excited, you're excited. Let's get started. Eight things I think you should know in Adobe Premiere in no particular order, starting off with number one, show audio time units. All right, down on my timeline, I have just a quick little video cut to some music. And the first thing we're gonna take a look at is show audio time units. Now, what exactly is that? If I were to zoom into this music track on my timeline, I can only go so far down here and zoom in. And if I wanted to trim this song, I have to trim it by frame, by video frame. And sometimes that's a little inaccurate. Like if I wanted to start at the beginning of this transient here, I actually can't. I actually go past the transient and now I'm not starting the song where I want to. But if you very simply come up here to this timeline indicator here, right click and go to show audio time units. Check this out. Now look how far I can zoom into this audio track. I can zoom in to like microscopic waveforms. It's literally insane. So if I wanted to start on this transient, which is right here, now I can very simply come over and I can trim based on audio time units instead of video frames, which is very, very useful if you're trying to line up parts of a song to splice together, or you just want a little bit more detailed grab of your audio track. You can do that with show audio time units. And to turn it off, you just right click here and you go back to show audio time units. And now it will go back to its original format where you just go frame by frame. Game changer if you want to get really nitty gritty and detailed with your audio. This works great for interviews. If somebody's talking in an interview and you need to cut it midway through a sentence, show audio time units will allow you to kind of trim back the last word of that sentence so it doesn't bleed over into other parts. And like I said earlier, if you're trying to splice two parts of a song together, this is how you're going to absolutely guarantee that the beats are spot on and you're not going frame by frame in video mode. All right, let's move on to number two, which is moving video up and down in your timeline. Now, some of you will just grab a clip and you'll move it up, but then look what happened. See that? It just came off one frame. Like that's not something that I wanna be dealing with. And if you guys are grabbing it with the mouse and moving it up and down, if you don't have snapping turned on, which is this little magnetic icon right here, your video may shift a little bit left and right, which will cause video to be out of sync with audio or just general problems overall with your video. Now, if you were to turn snapping on here, I can drag this up kind of confidently, but even still, I don't trust that. Now, what I recommend doing is taking your clip, clicking on it, holding down Alt and using the up and down arrow, which will move it vertically in your timeline across all of your different video tracks. And if you go up and up and up and you keep going up, it will create additional video tracks above your most recent video track. And then that will allow you just a lot more movement. All right, next we're gonna cover the pancake timeline. Now, what is a pancake timeline? Most of you, if you're doing selects for a video, you'll have two different timelines that you just kind of go through and maybe you have a bunch of selects here on your timeline and you'll click and you'll copy and then you'll move over and then you'll paste into your current timeline. Don't do that anymore, guys. Check this out, it's super easy. Take your B-roll timeline that you have, click and hold and just drag it onto your timeline indicator here with this little like blue shape right here and just drop it there. And it will actually allow you to put a timeline on top of your current timeline. And this is helpful for two reasons. I can click into this timeline and I can preview everything here that is in this timeline, or I could click back into my main timeline and now I have access to the video that I'm working on. And the second function of this is I can just take this and drag it into my new timeline and it will just drag straight over. I don't have to copy paste. I don't have to do anything unnecessary with switching back and forth between timelines, I can very simply just drag this into the timeline that I'm working on and then continue moving forward. 
And then if I wanted to take this, I can also drag it back into my normal view mode. I could close it and I can switch back and forth as normal. But this is what's known as pancaking because it's stacked on top of itself like a pancake. The more you know. All right, this next one is a big one and this is something I use every single day and it is insanely helpful. It is master channel video and audio effects. So if we come down to this timeline, I'm just gonna play you guys the beginning here of this little skate video thing that I edited. So we have all these little freeze frames and all these little cuts down here on the video. Now, what most of you do is you probably click on one clip, you come up here to your color tab and you'll color grade this one clip, right? Now that color grade is just living on that one clip. And what most of you do is you probably copy this color grade and then you go to each individual clip in the timeline and you paste it over and over and over again. Okay, that's great, but what if you don't nail the color grade the first time? Then you have to go back and change one and then copy it and paste it again and again and again. But why would you do that when you can just use master video effects? So very simply, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this color grade and if you click on a clip and you come up here to where it says master, now we're color grading the master clip. And so every time an instance of this clip appears in our timeline, the color grade will apply overall. So now I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm just gonna give it a really quick and rough grade. And now based on that one clip, all of those clips are now color graded and that's indicated by this little red line underneath the effects column on my timeline. And so now if I don't nail the grade the first time, all I have to do is click on any one of those clips, come up here to master, and now I can just adjust the master clip and that will affect all the clips in the timeline so I'd no longer have to copy and paste. And this is huge. This is a huge, huge time saver because if you have one clip that appears in your timeline like 12 million times, you're not gonna wanna copy and paste the new grade to each clip and you may miss one. The chances of you missing one are very, very high. So this just kind of secures you and makes you more confident in the things that you're doing because all of the clips on the timeline will have the same grade applied and you only have to do it one time. And guys, this works for more than just color grades on the master as well. So if you click on a clip up here in your effect controls, we have the same two options, master and timeline. So if we click on the master clip, we can apply other video effects to the master besides a color grade. So if I come over here to effects and say I want to just put in a horizontal flip, I can just drop that right on my master and it will flip everything around horizontally all instances of the clip on the timeline. So yes, that does work with video, but it also works with audio. And I have a completely separate video on this, but we're gonna cover it super quick. So down here at the end of my timeline, I just have this little snare and say I want the song to end here. But there's no real definitive ending on that track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this last little snare hit and I'm gonna hold down Alt and click and drag underneath itself to create a new instance of that ending. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to Window and go to Audio Track Mixer. And I'm gonna enable Audio Track Mixer. And then on Audio 4, which is right down here, up at the very top, I'm gonna to tool down this little arrow, Show Hide Effects and Sends. And now I'm gonna come up to Audio 4. I'm gonna click on this little down arrow and I'm gonna to come to Reverb, Studio Reverb. And now I'm gonna double click there. And I'm just gonna mess around with these parameters here to get a reverb that I think sounds really nice. Now you can mess with these settings however you want, but the most important part of this whole thing is to turn your dry level to zero and your wet level to 100. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the audio signal and apply 100% of the studio reverb to that signal and the dry signal is now our original track. So if you guys don't really know music terminology that well, uh, I'll try to visualize it for you. So I'm gonna close out of this and now check this out. I'm just gonna play this. <laughs> And now it's creating this nice long reverb tail on our audio effect. And now any piece of audio that I drop on audio four will have that exact same reverb effect on it. And if I solo this layer, you see it's just creating a nice big reverb tail. Now I've created a nice ending for that video based on the ending of the song where I want it to and I don't have to do any additional BS to try to get that to work. All right, so master video and audio effects, huge, huge part of my workflow. I use this every single day. It just makes me more confident in the things I'm doing with color grade or effects on video clips because it applies it to the master and also with audio, it just works super well and just speeds everything up. All right, the next thing we're gonna cover is not necessarily something to do in Premiere, but something to do for yourself. And it's having a vertical monitor. And we're gonna have to take the camera off the tripod for this. It's gonna be slightly awkward, but hey, we're gonna make it work. So check this out. 
I have a vertical monitor set up on my desk right here, and people always say, why do you have a vertical monitor? Well, it's very simple. If I come down here to my bins and I have a bin of footage, what I can do is open up that footage into a bin, and then I can click and drag this over to my second monitor, and now I can make this footage huge, and I can make it vertical, and I can just come in here and scrub through all of these videos, in my vertical monitor, and it's just a lot easier for me to see. So I have my complete workspace here, and I have all of my footage here, and I can make these big or small, and I can add multiple bins to the vertical monitor, and it just makes my workflow and my editing so much easier because I can just come in here and scrub through this, see what I want, double click, and then it appears in my workstation over here, and it's just easy to work with. So. If you have a second monitor and you have the ability to make it vertical, I absolutely 100% recommend you try doing that. It is great. All right, so the next thing we're gonna cover is enable and disable. And it's very simple. I come down here on a timeline and say, I don't want this clip to be in the timeline. I'm just gonna hit zero on my keyboard and it will disable it in the timeline. And I can then try to fill in this hole with other stuff that I may have. Or if I end up liking the clip that was there originally, I can just click on it and hit zero again. And this is very easy to set yourself. We're gonna come up here to edit keyboard shortcuts. We're going to type in enable and right down here under clip enable. I have mine set to zero. You can just click in the shortcut dialog box and set it to whatever you want. I like zero. I don't know why. Don't ask questions, but you can set this to whatever you want. And now I can just come in here and enable and disable any clips that I want. Try to fill them back in or re-enable them again. So this is a very useful shortcut, especially if you're doing multi-cam editing or interview editing. You can just enable, disable as you go along so you don't get rid of the original clip. And it's just a very fast workflow thing that I think that everybody should be using. All right, the next one is F to source monitor. So say I have a clip on my timeline and you did multiple takes in the clip and you know that you did multiple takes. How do you get back to this clip? Now, some of you may go back and dig through your footage bins to try to find it. Some of you may right click and then go to reveal and project and then double click here in order to get it up in your source monitor. Don't do that. That takes so much time. Very, very easy to come in here on this clip, click on the clip and hit F on your keyboard and that will put it up in your source monitor with the exact ins and outs that you have on your timeline. And then you can scrub back through and try to find something else, set a new in and out point and just drag it onto your timeline. And now you're moving super, super fast. There's no right clicks. There's no gratuitous like movements with it. Just hit F on the keyboard. It brings it up in the source monitor, find whatever you're looking for, bring it back down onto the timeline and move on. So the last thing we're gonna cover is option, click and drag to duplicate footage. And we kind of already did that down here. Maybe you guys at that point were like, whoa, I didn't know you could do that, but you can with audio and video. Check this out. I want to duplicate this clip on the timeline. All I'm going to do is hold down alt, click and drag on top of itself to create a new copy. And you can do this over and over and over again. Now, why would I want to do anything like this? Well, for a number of reasons, say you duplicate a clip on top of itself, and now you're going to come over here and you're going to add some sort of video effect. So maybe we add a sphere eyes to this video clip here and I make a nice big bubble sphere over my little skater guy here. And then I can come in and I can grade this in a different way. So since I already have a grade on my master, as you can see by this little red line, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm on the clip itself and maybe I'll just add a LUT and then I switch the blending mode hypothetically over to overlay. And now I'm getting this cool little like distortion effect on my clip. And now that little bit of distortion just happens when he hits the ground or something. But I very easily was able to do that by just simply clicking, holding down alt and dragging on top of itself to duplicate a clip as well as audio. Works the exact same way. And that's it guys, eight things I think you should know in Adobe Premiere and hopefully, hopefully, today you had one of those realization moments where you were like, oh man, I didn't know you could do that and this video was helpful to you in that way. Now, all the things we talked about today are doing two things. Number one, they're increasing your workflow speed and productivity. So all the things we went through today are meant to speed up the process so you can get your ideas from your head into the computer faster than you normally would. And then the second part of that is, is doing the speed with confidence. So having the confidence that what you're doing is gonna update and affect your entire timeline. You don't have to worry about missing something or copying and pasting a bunch of little nuancey things. So you can just keep working fast, keep working smart and keep working forward instead of continuously going backwards. All right, that about does it today for me guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something valuable in one of the eight things that we covered today. Also, if you wanna get yourself some learn how to edit stuff merch, links and everything are in the video description below. If you wanna support the channel, if you just want some cool post-production related merch, your choice. 
Hey, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Reach out to me on social at Naughty and Sands if you have an idea for a tutorial or something you want me to cover. Hmm. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time. I did that backwards, but I don't care. We're rolling with it.